There it is. All right, you guys. We got another beautiful PowerPoint ready for you guys today by Mr. TK. Thank you all for coming. Be able to be willing to elevate. We are recording. Thank you so much. We are recording, so we're good to go. Um, we've been busting through the process of basically individuation, how to become the best versions of ourselves. And we've gone through a lot of those stages currently so far. And this one is one of the most exciting ones there is the search for meaning. Everybody's going through it. Everybody's trying to find fulfillment in so many different areas in life. But the real search for meaning at the core of it is something we all need to understand in order for us to be the best versions of ourselves. But TK, I'll let you take it away, boss man. Yeah, no, I think that's a great foundation for it. Maybe I'll let you take it away. Cool. So uh, we, we started off with a quote here. We we're going to break it down. But every man's solution is hieroglyphic to those inquiries he would put. He acts it as lie before he apprehends it as truth. And so your thing there. Yeah, so just uh, <laughs> what, what this quote was saying in simple terms. So Ralph Waldo Emerson, he was a beast. This man secluded himself in nature. He was one of the most highly regarded poets in uh, literature. He's in all kinds of English studies. But he basically went into nature, secluded himself for a long time, and just wrote about the processes of nature. Because as we talked about last time, if we're a fish, if we're living our whole life with the stream hitting us head on, it's going to be a lot harder to make progress if we don't understand how nature works. If we understand how nature works, we can flip around, and the water can now allow us to move forward and work with us instead of against us. So every man's answer that we're all looking for to the questions that we ask is symbolized and interpreted as false. So it's like, ah, you know what? I have my view of the way it should be. And we're not always seeing the bigger picture. And we're always gonna think it's false and disagree with it until we get smacked in the face sometimes, a brick wall that, ah, you know what? Maybe it is true. So those questions, um, be able to dissect it, bring discernment to it and understand it might not be truthful at the beginning. We might hear some news that may not be 100% correct in our mind even though, again, it's a law of nature. And then as soon as that nature continues to hit us over and over, at that point, we can start to adjust and find out it really is true. <clears throat> yeah, so within the, the time frame in which we live, one of the symptoms of alienation in the modern age is widespread sense of meaninglessness. And so a lot of what we do in the modern age is to try and escape from this idea that we feel down at our core. And uh, whether it's, I want to get the next motion, I want to get the next car, I want to get the next clothes. It's all these things that fill the gap of not having meaning in life. And so a lot of people, if you hit that real quick. So this fight club side of things, it continues to symbolize the things we've been covering over the last couple of weeks. But at the beginning of the movie, he's somebody who's really searching to get all this furniture and fill his apartment. And he thinks that's what's going to make him whole and complete. But he doesn't really feel down at the core side of things. <clears throat> it's actually this feeling of nih nihilism. Why do anything at all? Because nothing really matters, right? And so that's a feeling a lot of people have in the modern age because we don't have any spiritual meaning or myth like we used to have. And so the story kind of goes as Christianity used to be that thing. It was the operating system that we worked off of within our psyches to basically continue to become more and more conscious of what is actually happening inside and what's happening outside. And so people had that operating system for what was good and evil. They would look at it through Christianity. They would go to church on Sundays and everybody was devoted to God within their lives. And if you weren't, you were the one who was the outsider. And so you can see those type of things are very different nowadays because now it's like science that's guiding everything. And so people have started to step away from the God idea. And so people don't have the same morality that they used to have of what was good and evil. And so those things continue to be evolved literally by the day now because Dr. Seuss is racist now. So it's like just little things like that. Um, Christianity used to be the core of things and that was how many people made their decisions inside. And so is it gonna further my truth with God is the way people used to look. But now there doesn't, we don't have any myth or anything that we work off of. We don't have that operating system anymore. And so we try to fill it with things outside with materialistic ideas. And here's even something that displays that point even further. So advertising has us chasing cars and clothes, working jobs we hate so we can buy shit we don't need. And it's the truest thing, especially in America, is people work a lot of jobs they don't like and it's all to buy things they don't absolutely need. But it's all to fill these gaps and these holes that we have internally 
but they don't realize it's actually a whole inside that they have and they're aiming for these things to fill that void but it's not something that could ever fill the void because it's a materialistic thing and the only way the fulfillment will come is if we're actually able to go inside and start to have that relationship right and so everybody feels this way within our age because we don't have that meaning anymore and so what are actually the steps you take and so what Jung got at is its individuation, continuing to find who you are as an individual in the world. Uh, yeah, just like he's saying, at the end of the day, though, the storyteller has the power. The people that we grew up with that are telling us the stories that we need to live, that's why um, different religions and different um, myths and different stories were so important because they gave us guidelines to follow in order to be, hey, there, there's a hole there. If, if, you're, if you're looking up the whole time, you're going to fall in the hole. It's the littlest stuff to help guide you through life. And if you get caught in the wrong story, we're going to be, we're going to be set up wherever they decide to set us up, especially if we continue living outside in. Well, I got to please the outside. I got to get this chair in my apartment in order to fit my I've been working for this chair. I finally get the chair. It's like, then I got it. And then it, like we talked about last time, once you reach a goal, you're like, that's it. What now? <laughs> because they're continuing to search outside for the story that we've been told. And us growing up, like we talked about last time, Lindsay, is where our parents' age and all, all of our grandparents' age demographic, they were able to see the movies on TV where everybody's a whole family. They're all working together. They are all um, a unit. And then as we started growing up, now, like we talked about Grey's Anatomy last time, everybody's with everybody. No, er, there's no rules. It's, it's getting crazier and crazier. And now with no rules becomes more stories. Now it's what story do we believe? Is Dr. Seuss racist? Oh, is he different than me because he thinks different than me? We get trapped in the story. So now everybody's trying to live their external story instead of understand we all go through that same, those, we all have to go through the same chapters in our story. But unless we know what those are, we're gonna be trying to find fulfillment externally instead of coming inside. And we'll, we'll talk about that in just a little bit as well. I think that's why they, uh, my guess is why he snuffed out. Young is really kind of snuffed out of the college curriculum. Mm -hmm. Because if you teach his stuff, you kind of kill consumerism, you know? An individual that knows their work, you can't tell them that they need something because they're ugly or they lack or they're weak or stupid. Right? They're like, no, I don't need that bullshit. And so <laughs> consumerism really takes a massive hit. Big time, and then it's like if you're if you're a kid in junior high and you see everybody with a certain brand on and they're the cool kids, it's like, fuck. Now I have to get that brand in order to be cool. It's like now I'm searching in that external to be something I'm not even. But the story told me that's what I'm supposed to be, so I try to get there, and then I become I buy those shoes that everybody else has with that brand. And it's like, why am I not happy? Why do I still not feel cool? <laughs> because they're living in that external. And, and you're exactly right. If you create a bunch of individuals that think for themselves instead of a bunch of followers, then you, you no longer have the power. And there is a lot of money to be made when you can dictate the masses, when you can guide the decision-making of many, many people. A lot of money to be made. A lot of money to be made and also control of people's souls in a sense because now they're playing on people's emotions. If you have to buy this, to be the guy. Yeah. So, okay. so once again, it's all guiding people that you're not enough unless you have this thing outside. And so it's a constant thing of, I finally got the clothes. Well, shit, I don't have the car. Or, oh, I can't go on vacation. No, I don't have the lifestyle. And so it's always this thing. It's this idea that you can never possibly reach. And so you're, you're stuck on a lifestyle and obsession that you can possibly get. And so why does all this happen? We've already started to paint this picture a little bit, but it really has to do with that loss of myth and that operating system that we used to function off of. And so many seek psychotherapy, not only for a clearly defined disorder, but because they feel that life has no meaning. So a lot of the reasons people even go to psychotherapists nowadays is because they don't have any meaning and they think all these things in their life are going wrong, but this is at the core of what it actually is. And so a great therapist would recognize that we have been at a transition with the software where we used to get our spiritual juice from, right? And so we're in this phase of life right now where it's like, man, always used to have some type of meaning, whether it be through myth or whether it be through a certain type of religion, it was easy enough to buy into back then because you had nothing to contradict it. Now you have millions of different voices every single day on the internet that would basically speak different to them, what Christianity would say or what, uh, literally anything what the Catholics would say 
and your different sex. So point being is you have all these different things that are taking you away from having that spiritual meaning and purpose. And it has to do with an age of science because science has in a sense started to become people's gods and it's very focused on the materialistic side of things. And rather than having the experience inside, now people start to have that outside. And so that's what science starts to do. But the major error in that is our psyche is not rational at its deepest level. And so if you actually look at the psyche and you look at it objectively, you'll see that a lot of these myths are what happens in people's dreams. They're very similar to the myths that happen in Greek mythology. They're very similar to the things that happen in Christianity. It's like a, a, a dream that you're reading when you read Christianity or any myth, but those are things that happen to us at our deepest level of our core. So although this outside world may be ruled by science and you know this specific table right here is built off of the basically the science that builds um, furniture and then just every single thing that's around us can be built by science but that doesn't mean that's how our internal world works. And so being able to realize that there's a major error in it when you're trying to apply the principles from the outside world to the internal world because you're going to be lost because it's a much more irrational and abstract inside. And so it's much more like a vision. It's much more like art inside than it is outside. And so that's where a lot of people's creativity stems from. That's why the greatest works of art usually symbolize something that happens like everybody's feeling, but nobody can actually see it until this person paints a picture and then they feel it. And so it's a lot more abstract in the beginning than somebody can actually manifest that in the real world but it's because somebody else has the ability to be irrational and abstract. And people are starting to lose this nowadays to actually have their own creativity because they don't know how to tap into this because science gets people to think so rationally rather than being able to be irrational and have these visions of, for their future, or have these visions for their family, whatever it may be. And this art in general is starting to get lost because of that reason. 100%. And now they give credibility to certain figures. And then anything that comes out of these certain figures now, they accept as truth instead of thinking for themselves. It's like it's like people nowadays, it's like, oh, you know, I don't need to research anything. Joe Rogan doesn't have a thing. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like, it's so real because he's getting so much. But you, you start looking into the depths behind it. You start looking into the figures that are actually the players and the movers in the industry. There's a lot behind them that you should probably know before you take that information into your head of what they're saying. And there's a lot of people that I agree with. There's a lot of people that I disagree with. But again, we have to be able to, the, the age of information is basically over. The age of information was a great thing for our parents' age and um, probably within the past 50 years. But now there's so much information. The real winners and the real intelligent people in this world are going to be able to sift through the information and utilize the gold and discard everything else. Bruce Lee says, no way is the way. He's gonna take every single person, every single art form of martial arts and only utilize what works, only utilize the gold. Discard the wasted motion. And like he's saying, science is gonna give you a certain view, but all science is a measure of what we can see and understand with our senses or measure with machines. Right? There's so much more to this world than that. But if we get lost in the science, we get lost in what one person says, now we no longer are thinking for ourselves. We're thinking externally, allowing that to come in instead of thinking internally and bringing discernment to the table. Yes, sir. No one has the best interest in yourself than yourself. Boom. You this is this connect yourself. So. Yeah. When you say it, that's money, but talk a little louder because this is recording because they think the peak audience <laughs> needs to hear that. Uh, one more time, if you'd be so kind. So no one has the best interest in yourself than yourself. Yeah, 100%. And go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. Um, so, are you sure? Yeah. <laughs> so I just, I do want to say something. I think that uh, the mod, in the modern age, we have such, we have separated and categorized everything in life. And we forget that everything is connected. Yes. And the problem with that, when we say science says this and spirituality is that we just we categorize science as something that we can measure with you know machines and, and, and gauges and, and pins and other things in observation but science is our way of understanding creation right right so it's not separate but we have to understand that most of those scientists are bought Absolutely, and they're fed information that they spread, 
And I mean, if you look at Carl Sagan's early works and what he was doing at the beginning of his career, then you look at what he said at the end of his career, it's clear proof of either threat or being bribed because he does a complete 180. And it's stuff like that we have to remember whenever we listen to and discern information that people claim is science, you have to go and look at the studies that they cite yourself right. and understand it and read it for yourself before you take it as gospel. Yeah, Because science sure. is not gospel. Right. And to, uh, to kind of, points. yeah, that's very well said. To kind of further paint this picture too, this isn't to say that science doesn't have its place in time. So it, it certainly does. And I mean, even being able to look at studies for your body and things like that, and just studies in general, they're, they're great. But what you don't want to do is just be just one minded and stuck in that rationality. You want to be able to be able to step into the irrational and do both. You want to be able to think logically, actually thinks in terms of science, but also be able to think in terms of emotion, because that's where you get life from. That's where you actually feel life rather than just think in terms of what is two plus two. Mm -hmm. Now it's actually more beautiful. It's like a movie and it's actually a lot more energetic. You feel a lot better about life than just, oh, everything is just thinking. How do I get this task done this week? How do I solve this problem? And so a lot of men tend to think that way, uh, where women tend to be somebody who can actually step more into the life. You know, they actually feel life and they're a lot more emotional in a good way. Um, and so men need to learn how to become more emotional. We're at the bottom of it. Um, women are also trying to learn how to become more rational in these certain ways. And so you want to be able to balance those two things and marry them. And so uh, you don't want to be just rational. But you also don't want to be just emotional either. You want to be able to be both. And then that's what creates more of a whole individual. And that's continuing to get the point. Individuation is to become whole. It's not become perfect. But if you can be both feeling nature as well as uh, science nature, then you can combine those things and actually start to become more of who you are. Because if we didn't have the scientific mindset, we wouldn't have been able to look at the psyche the way we're talking about right now. Because that's what allowed us to start to experiment and look into those things deeper. So at the very beginning of the uh, 20th century, that's when they started to dive into the whole subject of psychology, which is the study of the psyche. But if you didn't have science, they wouldn't have had the ability to start looking at it in that way to break it down and categorize to your point. Those are useful things, but then once you're actually trying to experience life, it can't so much be broken down into a formula. So being able to actually have those things and have their place when it's the right time the, uh, that's what you want to be able to do is balance those two things. Yeah. No, I, I just want to further paint the picture. So it's all connected. We just we right. to learn how to reconnect. Yes, everything is everything. It's the wheel of knowledge. They're all talking about the one point. It's just different angles. Everybody's talking about God, but what is that? Some people call it Allah based on where they were born. Some people call it uh, the big G gods. The, some people call it nature. Some people call it energy pumps. Some people call it science. Some people call it yoga. Yes. <laughs> if you're thinking of Nova, you're thinking of God. That's what's, yeah. so, that's what's so crazy about it. Yeah. yeah. It's because I have a family member who is atheist. Okay. Evolution is 100%. She's science based completely. Mm -hmm. And then I have a family very woman. Very woman. So there's never any, because they're so opposite, right? Yeah. But there is a lot of similarities between monkeys and humans. Mm -hmm. Like there is. Yeah. Like when you look at their actions and stuff, but it doesn't mean that's where we came from, but there's conflicting information whether they can feel like you have to choose. Right. You can't believe that there are similarities but believe in God because you believe in similarities and you don't believe in God. Like, but being able to choose that you understand the similarities and that scientifically things do evolve and things like that, but also believe that there's more to life than just to be here to be born and to die. Absolutely. It's like if we were, and that's the difference between a, an animal, because if you, you look at life as a spectrum, if you want to get biological, we have carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, and oxygen. These are what makes up every life form that we can at least understand at the moment, right? And if that's the case, if we were just animals, all we would think of is animals. Where's the food? Where is the, how do you reproduce? How do you um, continue to move forward? But you have this thing called free will that most animals do not have access to. And so there's something different in this man animal that has more than just flesh. Mm -hmm. There is absolute spirit in there of some sense. And so now what is that spirit? And 
that's what we're all looking for yeah, at the end of the day. Yeah, and in nature too, it's like you have to think animals don't actually have the capacity, like they probably have the capacity, but they don't commit evil, right? They usually only kill <laughs> for good reason. I think there's probably a few animals that will just kill to kill. But uh, if you look at nature as a whole, they generally only kill what they need. And so they're not trying to be harsh, like a lion isn't being rude to the gazelle, he needs to eat. <laughs> so it's like, uh, so point being, but humans have the ability to actually commit evil and like do something just to hurt the world. And so it's like, but they also have the ability to teach them like have that free will to do the ultimate good. And so it's like no other animal has that capacity. So whether or not you want to buy into evolution or uh, another God image form, it's like, regardless, we're more than the rest of these things are. And so that's something that you can't take away. <laughs> so regardless of what <laughs> argument you want to say, yeah. Humans are uh, a beautiful thing, and they're also a very dark thing at the same time. And you have to distill, you have to distill the information, just like um, the impure metals. You have to heat that bitch up so hot that all the impurities fall off, and you only take the gold. Because there's gold. If there is something with basis behind it, they're trying to talk about some sort of truth somewhere in some, and it gets distraught, it gets moved, it gets it gets diluted. But if you can burn all the impurities off and just take the gold, <coughs> then that's what you need to take from. With everything. With mm -hmm. everything. Everything, everybody, all of it. Were you about to say something, Brian? Uh, yeah, it's a little bit to do with the uh, you know, general topic that we're discussing. Um, <clears throat> I personally think that science is the reason why we, were, we have been able to categorize like, uh, certain specialists and disciplines. You know? It's the reason why we have like, heart surgeons, and it's the reason why we have pediatric doctors and it's the reason why we have uh, people who just focus on creating shoelaces and people who are just focused on health and people who are just focused on the spirit and body. Science created these like, categories that were like uh, for specialists, but in creating those categories, the same way that science uh, promotes consumerism in a way, is they, they almost make like these like new little to-go kits, you know, like the little toothpaste and like the deodorant and shampoo. Yeah, travel kits. yeah these little travel kits, right? So they make these like, ways and principles of thinking in each one of these disciplines, right? So in a way, they're like, they have a preset, like, kit of, uh, of thinking, you know what I mean? In a way, like, uh, a preset kit of uh, thoughts, you know what I mean? A preset kit of a certain way of thinking, and that's religion, and that's science, and that's everything, right? So it's like, when you, like, are thinking, you're, like, actually thinking in this little box that they made for you, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? Um, as opposed to going out and finding these items yourself and realizing that, dang, these items are in all these other little kits as well that people have. He's like, but I can't think inside the kit because that container can't fulfill my entire knowledge. You know what I mean? Like, I, I can't learn everything in just one discipline, one special. You know what I mean? But like, well, the world tries to tie you and make you just be one thing. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? And it's like, you can't just be one thing because human beings aren't just one thing. You know yeah. what I mean? So, um, I don't know, I kind of didn't have all that like figured like in my head before I spoke it, but I kind of wanted to say it. Yeah, I'm not making sense. That's how I get it out. It's but, even out there. No, just a little nugget on science itself, too. There's a meeting every five years to reassess the speed of light because it's not constant. There's nothing that's constant. The only thing that's constant is change. Really, science is an invariable thing, it's always going to be changing. Yeah. Planks, while like all of these things, they have scientific meetings every so often to reevaluate to make sure it's still the same because the universe is always changing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But science also is a great tool to point towards the fact that there is a creator of some sort. 100%. Of yeah. If you know it in a awesome. sequence, then you know that there's literal growth rate to pattern for anything and everything that grows on this planet. From the spiral of the way your hair grows on your head to the way that a flower petal grows on the flower, mm -hmm. the Fibonacci sequence yes. applies to it all. And that is a blueprint for creation, which points to a creator of some sort. <clears throat> so the way no facts. Right. People right. tell you to categorize science as science and religion as religion, but the thing is, is you can marry the two if you know what you're looking for. Hundred yeah. percent. And they right. don't exist without each other. Yes. Yeah. Hundred <clears throat> percent. I view science to be in a a way for humans to try to understand who created us as best we can. We just. We are emotional beings. We have a really hard time removing emotion from observation. Yeah, science actually sprang from alchemy, and alchemy was the study of how do these things connect to God, right? They, they ended up just taking that away.
then we're focused on just the study of the material. So and now it's more based on the result, and that's what like, I feel like facts aren't really real. You know, like, mm -hmm. if the science is just based off of like yeah. Uh, yeah. assumptions that the past will react the same way as the future, right? It's like I know this table is hard, not because it will forever be hard, right? But because every time I touch it, it reacts hard, right? It's like 10 seconds later, it's so hard. So then, oh, it's the fact that it's hard. It's like, will it be hard in 100,000 years from now? So now, some so ponder, better back, though, you know what I mean? Some of the pondering said 100,000 years from now, can that be, can that fact be altered now? And is that what people talk about miracles? Mm -hmm. So something to consider. So um, this, this goes back, we've already been painting this picture pretty clearly, but the great symbol system, once again, this operating software of which we used to function, which is organized Christianity, seems no longer able to command the full commitment of men's meaninglessness and alienation from life. And so Christianity, once again, it, it used to give us that symbol and that meaning for life. And it used to, men used to be committed to it for their whole life to get closer to God. And so they continue to become more and more conscious from following this idea. But now science has stepped in and taken people to start to have a new God. And so the same part of our psyche that used to be associated with, you know, Jesus is now associated with science or something that's outside of the individual. And so the issue with that is, is it's very dull. It's not a very fun existence if it's just very scientific based. And so people have depression nowadays or alienation. And so you can see, here, this is what people used to think of in their mind. This was the image, and they, every single decision they made used to radiate from Jesus being at their core of their psyche, and that would be the idea that they would have every single thing they do. It's literally that same idea of what would Jesus do. But every single act they would take would revolve around that idea. They want to be more like Jesus because he's the ideal. They knew it's just nothing that could ever be because he came into the world and he was you know, sinless, so they knew they could never reach it, but the goal was you want to be more like Jesus. And so every single action you took was what would Jesus do? And so to Teek's point, now, now it would be, what would Joe Rogan do? <laughs> so, <laughs> and, uh, I have a question for you. Yeah. Do you think that if, do you think, uh, uh, I don't know if I want to call it a problem, but let's just say that word for now. Do you think it's a problem that we're all looking in a way towards the same higher self? And with the same qualities um, at all times, but in reality, like we're just looking at ourselves uh, in a reflection of Jesus and what we could be. You know what I mean? Because we can never be Jesus, right? We can only be ourselves. Mm -hmm. It's like in reality, it's like I'm not trying to be Jesus. I'm trying to be like Jesus, right? But it's right. like everyone's trying to be like this one person, this one uh, image. So mm -hmm. I feel like that at times can get very blurry because we're all so different. Right. So that'd be the issue with like church versus your relationship with God. So it's like. Jesus was supposed to be, like was the ideal, but you're supposed to go through a very similar path that he went down, right? Because it's like you have your own cross to bear in the world and you have your own pain and suffering that you have to face. And so it's the idea was you want to go through the same type of process he did in his whole life. And then it's like he got crucified for speaking truth and doing the right things. And it's like very well the same thing could happen to you, right? Yeah. It's like, like, your truth. Like right. So it's thinking about his life symbolically as you want to go down that same pattern. And that's always going to be valid, right? It's like he got killed and then uh, he went down to hell and he had to face all these demons, right? Essentially. And so you have to go down into your own personal hell and only then can you come back up and raise back up and actually be on earth again. And then you actually ascend into heaven, but you can only go into heaven if you've descended down into hell first. So he is the outline to not do it. Yeah. Right. So there's the objective experience, which is kind of the myth itself. And then there's your subjective experience, which is following yeah. the blueprint. Yeah. Yeah. No, I feel like a lot of people are still stuck in that construct of looking for a savior. Because that's what they've been taught forever, which they without having to look for the same inside of themselves. Yes. yes. So it's like they're still stuck on that you like biologically, you know what I mean? But it's just DNA and like lifetime for everybody to be taught. So like people don't understand that like consciously they're looking for a savior without them knowing that the savior is inside them. Yes. God dwells inside. Yeah. And that's, that's the idea too. It's like, it's like, are all these ideas things that happen physically, or did some of them happen psychologically? So it's like, did they happen on the outside or did they happen on the inside? And I think it's hard to say. But a lot of it could be the hereditary too. Like, mm -hmm. Yeah, our ancestors believe that they need a savior because that's all they've taught. 
So that's the idea too, it's like Jung went into not just the basement of man, but like the collective unconscious. So it's like he went down into the mines that were below the basement of man, and like these stories, these myths that dwell in all of us. So it's like whether or not somebody's Christian doesn't mean that Jesus doesn't live in their psyche, right? And so it's like, uh, it's almost like he is real in that sense and he hasn't gone away inside people's minds. So, yeah. That's the thing. That's the thing. And you can't kill an idea. You can kill flesh, but you cannot kill an idea. And I think Jesus was just trying to teach us that, like, we are all puppets. Yes. But, like, people were like, how you said, like, not everybody's on the level of thinking. So everybody was like, yo, this dude's on some other shit. So, like, let me, let's just follow him, what he's doing, instead of, like, looking from his perspective. So everybody got lost and basically lost themselves. Yeah, my guy, that's real, though. They're still lost themselves. Yeah. 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 And so we have to have a myth or a story or a guideline like we we're talking about to follow in order to be the best version of ourselves. So just like TK was saying, what is your myth? Just like you were saying, I'm not trying to be Jesus. Jesus had different obstacles. I live in a different time. I'm trying to be like Jesus. I'm trying to be the best of me. And I'm going to bear my cross, whatever that cross is. And where, so where do most men search for their meaning in life? The three G's, remember this, gold, God, and glory. So where do we go wrong with these three Gs? Um, for gold, it's like, okay, what are we willing to turn a blind eye to in order to get paid? Hey, you know what? I got this big opportunity for you, but you're going to have to cross the line a little bit on your ethics. Like, oh, shit. You know, it's like, well, I'm, I'm about to get paid for it. Should I do it? Should I not? Well, out of sight, out of mind. Let's get that paycheck. And then you can just put it behind it behind. It's like you look at this with a, a, any crimes, honestly, any organized crime. Or sometimes, guess what? It's internally inside the FBI, inside the, I know people who declined the FBI positions because in certain situations, they were asked to do things on the gray area that did not align with their ethics. And because of that, yeah, they got paid. Yeah, they may have got a promotion. They may have moved forward in their material world, but internally, boom, they got demoted in essence. They no longer were true to themselves. Gold, God, and glory. Um, what if we stray away from the big G, God, and get caught up in religion? So now I'm focused on God. I adopt this religion. And man, you know what? I'm the best in my religion. Oh, you know what? Crew thinks different than I do. So, well, he didn't go to church this Sunday. Well, but you know what? He drank alcohol this week. So he I can't be so bad. I'm, I never do that. Shame on crew. You know what I'm saying? And we, we can't get caught up in this stuff because... These things come disguised as great things. Like, man, oh, God, and glory. I want all of them. But if you get lost in the sauce, you get sucked into the ocean, and now you start drowning instead of swimming in it. Um, so let's go here. Sorry. Oh, shit. Do you mind if I just add a small thought to it? Absolutely. Um, yeah, just to add to that point, too, uh, just on the judgment side of things, who are you to judge when you have areas of your own life that you could be better in that? And so casting that judgment out on somebody else when you could be judging yourself. Judging yourself is the more important thing. So not getting caught up in judging the outside world and how people act, but judging yourself. And that's the whole idea of being humble that we continue to talk about. And also, if you want to look like a terminology and common sense, like doing the right thing and like basically being a righteous person, it's like it kind of goes hand in hand. So like if you become righteous, which is like the goal, you're doing the right thing. Just turn, just turn it on to the concept. Truly, 100%. Yeah. 100%. I feel like that's where looking in is very important. You know what I mean, it's like those like kids I say, it's like, like the think like us kids. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like, well, I have these thoughts though that like aren't anything to do with this kid. I want to think these thoughts. Like, they're my thoughts. So they're like, no, think like us. Remember, go back to the kid. Think like us, kid. You know? So it's like you can't find those answers inside that kid. You know, the container is not fit for us. You know what I mean? All these containers of like, Specialists and disciplines that we have, they're not fit for us. You know, our, our container is humongous. You know, it's never ending, it's growing all the time. And they want to keep us confined with these little bit of thinking thoughts. You know what I mean? And it's not, I'm not trying to demonize they or the man or, you know, religion or this because we all need each other at the end of the day. You know what I mean? So it's like, it's if we're not matter. careful, we, all, we will all become those things that will be the oppressor if we don't keep ourselves in check. We can start to like think of it like, that we are like we're saying we're gods, but when we think we're the capital G, when we think we're the big G, and we're not like a lowercase G that has to work as a unit, yeah. that's where it gets polluted. And that's so you see the people like the Rock, uh, Rockefellers, 
where he thought he was God. And so everything else, if all his decisions made, well, everyone is below me. I don't need a nation of, think, of thinkers. I need a nation of workers. It's like this, this idea. So we got to stay, stay in our lane in some regard, like no, understanding the kid is there to serve us. We're greater than the kid, but the only way we can be greater is if we do it together. It's so like know the rules to break them. Yeah, that's, yeah. That's, yeah. That's, that same idea of your, your toolbox idea you're bringing up too, is like the little kit is uh, even in Fight Club, he's talking about a copy of a copy of a copy. And in the same way that all these these coffee stores are the same, you know, all these uh, all the McDonald's are the same, people start to be that, right? And so they get put through some type of system that makes them just the same. And everybody's just a copy of a copy of a copy. Nobody's actually real, nobody's actually themselves anymore. And so how do you actually cut through that and become who you are? And that's what true greatness is just being originality, right? Because it's like all you gotta do is be to be original. And everyone's trying to be not that. Right? You know, so it's like uh I think that greatness is not like this concept of like what other people think it is, you know. I think greatness is just being you know, like yes. yeah. add on to what we're talking about, cleaning your own cup though. If I clean my own cup, everybody else's cup is also clean. If my cup's dirty. If I'm looking at Denby and judging everything wrong with Denby, instead of looking at everything great with Denby, all of a sudden I'm gonna start thinking of the bad stuff in myself too. Or I'm either gonna start getting depressed and thinking of the bad stuff in myself, or I'm above Denby, I'm above Denby, thinking I'm so great. And then all of a sudden I get smacked down. So just be aware, clean your own cup and everybody else's cup is gonna become clean as well. Um, so what if we don't know, we get, what if we know we won't get caught? It's like, oh, if the, who are you when the camera isn't on, when the camera's not looking? What, what would we do to come back as the victor of the battle to gain glory? So for example, if you are going out to a war, let's say you're going out, you're, you're on a crusade for a good cause, you know, in the name of God, I'm gonna come uh, bring this knowledge to this next village. And they don't like what you're saying. Boom, you, you strike everybody down. But then you go back and man, they just wouldn't listen. You know, they attacked me and out of the glory of God, I decided I had to defend myself. And then all of a sudden they're gonna say, man, this is the hero. He came back, he did this great thing. And nobody even knew. What are we willing to do when nobody is gonna know about it? Again, the storyteller has the power. So what are we gonna do behind closed doors? That's the true version of ourselves here. And this is a, it's always gonna come in a beautiful sense. This is an amazing picture TK sent to me here. Look at this. He's focused on the beauty of this female here. It's everything is the gold, the God, the glory. Man, you can have everything you want. You can have anything. You can have the riches. You can have all the materials. You can have all of this. He's like, that's tempting. Look at that mermaid here. You know? <laughs> Little does he know the depths, and it's going to come back to bite him. This may be something as similar as adultery. Let's say you're married. It's like, man, you know what? I'm, I'm married, but look, look at this girl, though. She, she's everything I imagined. She's everything I, I love perfectly, but it isn't my wife. But you know what? Nobody's going to know about it. Ah, let's get in the water. I just dip my toe in. You know, and next thing you know, it comes back to haunt you in one way or another. It hits, it's always looming. This might be stealing. You know what? Well, nobody's going to know about it. So, you know, I might just swipe it and go. It's going to come back to you, whether it be physically or psychologically. One way or another, it's going to come back. So it's like, and this, this is a, we're going to talk about this in a little bit, a siren in essence, an illusion. The devil always comes to you in beautiful, beautiful ways. It was the most beautiful angel there was. He was the, he was the right hand man of God. He, he was one of the, the best of the best. That's why all these celebrities have all this nice shit. Because mm -hmm. he's really powerful here on this plane. And he can give you a lot of the stuff, a lot of the rewards and the physical so stuff that you want. You have to sell your soul. That's why all these rap, all these singers, like it's, it's not. I don't want to say just rappers because it's been going on in the music industry since before, before, like any of us were born, any of our parents were born. But that's why they die so young. It's like they signed that, they signed up for it. It's like you're gonna have all this stuff, but you're dead at 27. Yeah, yeah. The, 27. System, <laughs> it's a, the system makes original kids and women, original thinkers and such a beauty. I feel like kids have just like such a beautiful mind. Mm -hmm. I think they're closer to the source than we are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So um, I just feel like as someone who uh, works in the entertainment industry, you know what I mean, like professionally, uh, you see uh, a kid go from like certain goals that are theirs to like as soon as money starts to come in, as soon as like fame starts to come in, boom. Okay, maybe I should sign this contract with Disney. Maybe I should, you know, sign my life away to this, and then maybe I should do that, and then the music no longer becomes their music. It's just their music with their name on it. You know what I mean? Uh, so then it's like, 
the system starts like does that for you. You know what I mean? It's like you don't gotta do anything. You just gotta like, let it take you. You know, and like every, the world will do what it will, stop you wherever. You know, and uh, it's not. It's harder to, like you said, not go and get the door. You know what I mean? So it's, it's a yeah, temptation. Take, it take, what does it all do? It takes away your individuality. Yeah. So it's exactly. like it'd be the equivalent of him getting pulled into the water by the industry. You know, yeah. so. But it's it's not much different than that. The story gets told every single day. So people get into this beautiful idea and it pulls them into the water, which makes them unconscious, and they start to become less and less themselves. They start to become that cookie cutter personality. So. And uh, this picture goes along. If you guys have ever seen Beowulf, you need to watch Beowulf. Um, it's a 2007 movie. Uh, but there was a king basically, and he was cursed. He was cursed because just like that lady we saw in this previous picture. He slept with this lady and he had a son and the son was of, of demonic possession in essence because the lady was of demonic possession and because of that he was cursed continuously but by the time um he he he, he recruited a hero he recruited beowulf to come slay the monster beowulf slayed the son and then he had to face the woman himself he had to face the woman himself and then he went back into the woman's lair and she's a dragon, just like this. This is her true nature, but she disguised herself as this. And he's like, he goes in and he's in a dark cave. Nobody else is there. Nobody else is there. And she's like, hey, I can make everything in the world that you want. You'll be a king. You'll conquer the lands. You'll have anything and everything. But your heart has to stay in this cave. And this item that they had, a symbolic item of a dragon, a horn. Okay. As soon as the horn was removed, she said, she said, nothing will hurt you until the horn was removed. And eventually the horn got removed and it, it all started to come back. The dragon started to come back at him. But he, he knew it was the most interesting thing. There's a scene in there where uh, some guy was trying to revolt against him. He has an ax and uh, they're like, don't, don't get in a battle with this guy. That's the last guy that they're fighting. He's, and they're like, the king is not supposed to battle. Beowulf's the king of the time. He hops off his, uh, his horse. He rips all his armor off. And he's like, you think you want to kill me? He says, kill me then. He's like, yeah, he argues a bare chest and the guy has an ax. And the guy starts trembling and shaking and he can't kill him. He's like, you want to know why you can't kill me? He said, because I died a long time ago. And he died a long time ago because he sold his soul to this lady here. She gave him the power. She gave him what he needed, but he sold his soul for it. And now he's lost in the sauce forever. He can't even climb back out. He got so deep. And so being able to keep ourselves from that temptation, keep ourselves, how do we not sleep with the girl? How do we not get trapped in the area? Uh, if you guys, yeah, go ahead. Real quick. Yeah, so the Beowulf side of things, he goes to this lair, and even in that lair, it's, uh, it's all gold and ditches as well. Yeah. So it's like this dark cave to his point, but it's a lot like that anytime that the material is trying to suck you in. And so the material is trying to always pull you down into having that materialistic view. You'll sell everything for it. But you do get cursed when you get into it. So the feminine nature uh, can pull you down. This isn't not females, but feminine nature is kind of symbolic of the material world. And so you can get sucked down to that same point in the picture before. And so Beowulf has to do that, <laughs> but uh, it's a beautiful movie. But the point is that movie displays what happens in our heads. And so it's like the movie's not so fictional. And so that's the idea of all these myths and these religions not so fictional when it comes to the way your psyche works. And so although it's irrational, like we were talking about at the beginning, and it's more vague and it's more of a vision, that doesn't mean that it's not fact. And so looking at psychological facts versus yeah. materialistic facts is a very important thing. So you'll, you're told your whole life fiction's not real, right? But what does real mean? And so being able to actually look at fairy tales and things like that, there are all these symbols for things that go on in our heads, like the princess and the dragon in the, the castle. And so you have all these different ideas, but they're all things that happen in your head. So continuing to point that out. And this is one of the biggest stories from the Greek mythology side of things. It's crazy to, uh, to realize that like, uh, back again to like, I died a long time ago thing is like, people only get to a certain place of thinking, you know, thought, and they hit a wall and they're like, this is the end of the road for me guys. See you, you know what I mean? And they just like close that door of thought, you know what I mean? And like, I think that's how you, that's the perfect way to lead yourself to close mindedness. And I think that everyone's closed minded. They're just on um, different levels. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I think we're all still closed minded. You know what I mean? There's still doors we can open and unlock, you know. But um, 
I think that regardless, the common pattern here is you're gonna die every day. So either you like choose to kill yourself, you know what I mean? I guess like metaphorically in a way, you know what I mean? By uh, closing all these doors um, or you can die, you know what I mean? And see that as a beautiful day to die, you know what I mean? It's like, uh, like I said, die metaphorically, like let life take you, you know what I mean? Nature isn't scared of that, you know what I mean? That has like this crazy paradigm way of thinking, you know what I mean? But it's like, there's no beauty to death without life and life without death, you know what I mean? So it's like, uh, back into the killing yourself part, it's like, we have the choice to either continue with this life, you know what I mean, or not. And it's like that, you can take the literal or you can take the metaphorical, you know what I mean? So um, that killing yourself part is like a very important thing, you know what I mean? Because like you said, I died a long time ago, you didn't say I killed myself a long time ago. I mean, there's a big difference up there. 100%. And even Jesus says, he says, in my father's house, there's many mansions. If you close the doors off to the mansions, you can't even see the kingdom of heaven because again, that dwells inside. You have something to say though before? Oh yeah, I was just gonna say like that's why it's good to be aware and conscious about what you do, whether you're positive or negative, because that's like energetic karma. So it's like people don't understand like what you do, what you can close and close, you know, it can affect you in your lifetime. Right. It might not affect you in a year, maybe a few years, or not even in this lifetime, but who knows like Energy's there, yeah. And so it's like crazy. it might affect you in a way where you don't feel like in another lifetime, you're like, why is my life going so bad? It's because you weren't conscious in another, right? Another way, you know what I'm saying? No, 100 right. And it could be as something as simple as this like, let's say my brother's TK, let's say in the future, TK or Demby, they get married in the future, and it's like in front of us, like, man, great to see you. You know, you're my sister, you're good. And then I go behind closed doors, and now I'm visualizing a different story with that female. I, I, if I visualized it, even behind closed doors, I might as well have committed it in person. So be careful what you visualize, be careful what you think about, because those crimes, those psychological crimes are just as um, valid in the spirit realm as physically committing those crimes. Everything that is here is here first. Yes. Everything. Other than if it was not of nature, which is like the god minds, which would still have made it here in some regard, but like this, like the the, the myth itself, uh, like the act of cheating, the act of like those, it all has to start here, you know. Hundred percent. Yeah, wherever the mind goes, the body follows. Like it starts every every creation, every reality starts in the mind. It's really awesome. Yeah. You told me this. You said where attention uh, goes, energy flows. That's what you said, right? Hundred percent. It's not the first thought that matters so much as the follow up thought and the correction in your own mind that reprograms your thought process mm -hmm. to get there. So you're not bad for having an accidental thought that you may have been externally programmed to have without even realizing it. That's a way I wish not to be identifying. Like yeah. It's it's what you follow up with and what you identify with and what you allow yourself to absorb emotionally. Or whether you're like, no, that's not what I want. I do not take part in that reality. That's just what I say to myself. If I have like a weird thought of like, oh, I don't take part in that reality at all. No, I don't like that. I choose the better guy. Hundred percent. Our collective myth is the is like fish. Pleasure Island season six. So that's like, oh, well, everybody on Pleasure Island cheats on their significant other, so it's just normal. Just, that's like how life is. It's human nature. It's not allowed that. Because it's something that I had to learn. It took me a really long time. The way that you speak to yourself internally is extremely important as well. So don't demonize yourself for making mistakes. Just accept those opportunities to grow. Truly, it's what you do with your free will. Money. And that's that's what separates the human from an animal. That's that's how you can understand there is a God. There's a science. It's a doctor scientist. I'll find the exact quote for you. But he says, "At the first gulf of scientists, you're an atheist. But at the bottom of the cup, you find God." So there's this there's this story here um, from Iliad and the Odyssey. Odysseus, right here. If you guys have ever heard of the sirens, they're these little bird ladies. Sometimes they're symbolized as mermaid type figures. Um, but they have the most beautiful song in the world. So all these seafarers, they're driving their boats in the Greek mythology. And if you hear the call of the sirens, it's, it's almost hypnotic. It's like, oh, man, like 
again, you know, that might be the most beautiful woman on the world, on the planet. That might be the most wealthy version of myself that they're going to give me all the gold in the world. Or, hey, I might come back with all the glory. It's all of those songs that are playing and they're hypnotizing you. And what the siren's job was to do is to hypnotize these men to where they would guide their boats into the rocks and crash and take them all out. And so Odysseus right here, he's like, you know what? I want to hear him. I want to hear the siren. So tie me up to the mast. So they tie his ass up here. They said, tie me up. I want to hear him. Guess what he had to do to all of his workers here? Look how, look how they're, they're covered. They got their ears covered. He put beeswax in all of their ears so that they couldn't hear him. Because if they heard him, he's in trouble. So tie me up to the mast. And no matter what I do, don't let me go. So they tie him up to the mast. And he starts hearing. They're, they're rowing. They're rowing. And he starts hearing the sirens. And he starts screaming and begging, let me go. I want to go into the water. Let me go. He's trying to get out. He's trying. He tries so hard. He cuts himself with the ropes and with the ties because he wants to get out into the sirens. He wants to hear the songs. He wants to be with them. He wants that first illusion. And the rowers, though, they see him freaking out. They're like, he told us, don't let him go no matter what. We're just going to keep on rowing. We got to keep on going. So, so they keep on going and finally get out. But just to add on to that, um, he wanted to hear the sirens. He begged. Um, he cut himself. Now, what are the sirens in our life? What is taking us away from our purpose and our truth? What stories are we getting fed? What are those hypnotic rhythms, hypnotic sounds? Like, oh, man, there, there she, there's the girl of your dreams. You might want to go grab her. Um, but it's not even the girl. It's the image of the girl that we see. Um, and then it's so weird because we know that we don't want to listen to the sirens, but it's so tempting. It's like, oh, man, it's like food. It's like, man, that cake is so good for the first 30 seconds. It's like, man, I, fuck, I want that cake. You know, it's like, I might as well, ah, should I get it? Should I get it? What are the sirens in our life? And what is the importance, just like crew was saying earlier, of having a crew? You got to have your boat crew that has the beeswax in their ears or a brotherhood or a team in order to keep you in check. Because you might be the strongest man in the world. This man was mentally tough here. He tied himself up. He wanted to hear him. He wanted to, to dip his toe in the temptation waters. But he could not handle it himself. Sometimes we can't completely trust our own judgment, especially when we're hypnotized. It's like, let's say I start talking to a new girl. And for the first two months, it's like, I'm seeing everything great about this girl. She's my dream girl. Man, I love, she's pleasuring me in mental, physical, emotional, and what I think is spiritual, and then I go over to them being TK or crew, and they're like, dude, like, hey, I know she seems super great, but we found out this news that uh, she's really been doing this, 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 and this, and you probably should talk to her. Now I got a decision. I'm gonna call oh, these guys. You know, like they don't know, they don't know what I know about this girl. They're not, but they're not hypnotized. They got the beatbacks in their ears. So what am I gonna do? Am I gonna jump in the ocean and, and go follow the sirens until I get crashed into the rocks? My boat gets disintegrated? Or do I listen to my crew who loves me, who wants the best for me and is gonna keep me in check? Because sometimes, no matter how strong we are, mentally, physical, or emotionally, we need to be saved from ourselves every single time. Um, <laughs> yes, you're right, 100%. She wasn't the one, but they tried telling her. Right. You were driving the car. Right. I, told, I told you to stop. It was a red light. Right. You, you, told her, you told us to cut the ropes. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> you were going to listen. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> it's so real. And it's like, so what are most people searching for? And it's the fulfillment in the external world instead of the internal. The kingdom of heaven dwelleth inside us. The spirit of the big G dwelleth inside there's so many Bible verses on that. Um, we talked about this. Um, example, the spouse of their dreams, and then once they have them, then what? It's like, oh, for the first two months, that was the girl of my dreams. And then I heard from my brothers, I didn't want to listen to them. And then now I start hearing it from public places. Man, every instead of being at home, hanging out with me and getting better, she's out at the bars every weekend doing her thing. And, like, and now I start hearing it from 30 other people. Like, man, right. It's like, that's, that's the worst thing that it's like, oh, fuck, this isn't what I thought it was. Or it's like, man, she was everything I want. I married her. And then I only, I didn't really marry her. I married the image of what I thought she was supposed to be. And now it's like, oh, this ain't even her. So now I got to look for the next image. I, I seen this guy. It's like, man, most of you guys that get married, 
uh, you're in a you're in a relationship, and then you're already shopping for a new relationship. And this guy made a wild comment. He's like, and it shouldn't be this way. It truly shouldn't be this way. But he said, well, do you ever go into a shoe a shoe store without any shoes on? And it's like, oh man, it's like, it's like, that's, it's like that's the terrible way to think about it. Because if we get trapped in that mindset, we're never gonna stop shopping ever. So. And then we live in the honeymoon phase from next honeymoon to next honeymoon to next honeymoon. Yeah, the idea in the West is you fall in love, right? And so people get into this idea to get a relationship mm -hmm. and they have this divine image of who she is, right? This each point. And then they continue to see the real life version versus this idea that they've had of the person. And so they continue to get it corrected over time. And so several years start to play out and they're like, oh, I guess I'm not in love. But <laughs> you're trying to make a human person this goddess, right? or a God. And so they can never actually live up to this idea that you're setting for them. So in the West, it's like all focused on this idea that you gotta be in love and your relationship has to be like that until you two die, you know? And so it's just, they'll continue going for a very long time. And then this, I'm not in love. So then they look for the next one and they're like, I'm in love again. <laughs> and so like, love. this it's is so the one. Right. They're yeah. looking for this like enamored, like looking for the sirens romance and right. every time it starts out like that it ends like that and then now you're left with this person that you don't know or that's not your friend right. or that has all these extra things their resume might be impeccable yeah. you can see people's resumes and you're like this is the person yeah you're right and then you like spend some time with them and you're like but you're like you never do what you say you never you know like you don't follow through and like the main things that actually matter they don't ask on the resume. Exactly. Yeah. So then you're like left with. Yeah. So you have to depict the image away from the actual human, right? And right. that's the issue is, is like, that's why the psyche is more real than the outside world. It's because you project the way you feel onto somebody. And so you do that with friends, you do that with family, because there's always the idea of the person, and then there's the actual person. But sometimes you can confuse. No, of course not. Like this, yeah. But you have to separate the image that you're setting for somebody versus who they actually are. Because especially in a relationship, is you don't want to intertwine those feelings too. Like obviously you want to experience love, but the thing that happens is you're trying to experience the image through a human individual. And you can't do that because they're they could never be a god, right? right? And so you need to be able to separate those two things or else you fall into this trap and then you think, oh, I'm not in love. But really what a long-term relationship is, is it's, it should more so be focused on that human love. I want to love them that's more focused on commitment and loyalty. So it's a lot more like your family. It's like, so, yeah. He's always going to be my brother. You know, it's like, and she's always going to be my girl. And so it's a lot more like that than, uh, you know, going falling for this trap that it's always romantic. Yeah. You always go on these beautiful dates. And it's always an adventure. Yeah. It's like, it should be, but it's not going to be like that all the time. And so you have to realize like it turns into more commitment, loyalty, and that type of love versus all oh, this beautiful thing, you know, that we've been raised to see through Disney and all entertainment. Yeah. Or in, but I, I wanted to say that too, is we've been programmed from a really young age to believe like, I don't know how many, it's our generation grew up, every girl I knew loved The Notebook and yeah. Twilight. Yep. Now, I'm not a sparkly vampire, I would never think and you know what it's you're not it's very rare that you're going to meet someone and just be like i'm in love with you we, we made eye contact we are going to get I married know, that, that <laughs> and that's what that's they program you to think that these things yeah. are possible it's not they're not possible it's just they're not realistic and we idolize these things but i think there's true beauty in a, in a marriage of two people that have gone through a dance and it's it's not been perfect They've made it through some serious obstacles because they chose love and they chose the commitment to one another that they made every time. It's rare that you're going to find somebody who even has that mindset because they've been programmed to think, oh, well, it's the next sw right swipe on Tinder, I'm sure. Yeah. It's the next left, you know, like, it, you know, I don't like him anymore. Oh, he said one wrong thing that, you know what, it just, it was a red flag. You're, nope. Next one. Yeah, and what is Next the, one. what's the myth nowadays in that sense? What's the story being told that's, I don't need a relationship, I can just hook up with people too. Yep. Yes. Because people allow it. Yes. But then also in relationships, like you're speaking of, there's a line, there's a boundary of what you should tolerate and what you should not. Yes. And so it's like, yeah, you can do that dance and, and forgive and love, but like, right. there's a boundary to like. Oh no, I'm not saying like allowing someone to cheat on you 
three times. And said, okay, well, I love you, so I'm going to stay We're with you. We made it. You won't leave. You won't leave. <laughs> yeah, three then you get, times. Then you get to die <laughs> yourself. As soon as you get to die yourself, you're not. <laughs> you struck out a chance. Yes, and yourself. <laughs> yes, because if not, now all of a sudden you're less mean and you're no longer saying to yourself up or down. And but, then so she'll stay or he'll stay regardless of what I do. Right. That's where, uh, and you're getting stuck in the image. But I used to be addicted to pornography. And this is a young men go through this all the time. It's mad. Video, 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 dopamine, 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 dopamine. And then I'm in the relationship. I'm like, damn it, this isn't like a video. <laughs> What's going on? You know, like I'm like, I'm expecting it to be like a video. I'm working for it to be like a video. It's like I'm playing my part in the movie. Why isn't this playing you? Why aren't you playing your part? That's what I saw. That's what it's supposed to be. <laughs> <laughs> I sent the script. Yes, I sent the script. And, and it didn't play out. And it's like you can get trapped in that illusion. And there's those sirens again. I think people um, are looking for love outside themselves instead of like finding true love inside themselves. Yeah. Yeah. And that's like with the problem that I see a lot. Like, everybody's looking for something outside themselves. Like, and they don't love themselves. And that's like what the main goal is to love yourself. And that attracts people that love yourself. Mm -hmm. yes. And that kind of like it kind of like combined when you when you love yourself, you'll start attracting people with the same love that you have for yourself. And that's how like I feel like you get that true love. True because love. You don't want somebody that's looking for love inside of you because that's gonna be a problem later on. So it's like it just goes into like loving yourself first and then loving other people because now you know what true love is. Yes. And so like, oh I, I love you because you make me feel happy. No, I'm already, I already love myself, so I'm happy. So what? Do you love yourself? All right, boom. Let's, you know, let's exactly. love. Yeah. Now it's out. That, that's that's the like with the unconditional love starts there because we are gonna see all the fuck ups. You know, like we're gonna see how bad that we really are. We're the one that sees when no one else is looking. So we know all our dirty laundry, our track record. So we have to actually be able to go in and forgive that that past stuff and love ourselves despite it and then love ourselves enough to not do it again so it's like you have to be like always forgiving and always growing that's where your compassion goes for other people because once you have to forgive yourself you can forgive other people you can understand what they came from and their mentality and they did it bad for you do it i think that uh, loving yourself uh, <clears throat> breaks the illusion of like uh, the beauty of what is aesthetic because everything in life is like all I said, right? They want to paint a perfect picture. And like you can uh like have that perfect girl, you know what I mean? Everything about them is perfect, you know. Like you like everything. You know, you can even be attracted to them internally and everything. But you just know it's not the one. And then you just there's something about them that's not it. So then aesthetic and everything, you know what I mean? Like it, it, it's not everything, you know. And I think that um when you start to love yourself, things that come in shiny and pretty things don't attract you as much anymore. So you kind of want to like see how long it shines. You start to want to be able to jump into your soul. Mm -hmm, like exactly. You see from different, like you have like a spiritual lens now. Yeah. So as you love yourself, you start feeling their love. And like, it's like you're not seeing the, the vessel, you're seeing what's inside them. Because there's a lot of like beautiful women on the outside, but how you can see how ugly they are on the outside is by the way they move. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And that's like when you start loving yourself, you start actually paving the road for, for you to like find the right people. I think to tie all the relationship stuff back to this is the most important thing is to love yourself. And the only way you can do that is if you know who you are. And so a lot of these myths and these ideas that we're going through, that is the point is these are the things that drive you to go into yourself further into your unconscious and figure out who are you. And so that being said, yeah, we're almost there. Stick with us. We've got the three sisters of fate here. Um, in Greek mythology, I, not gonna, I'm gonna slaughter their names, but you have the lady who spins the thread of life. You have the lady who distributes how long the thread of life is gonna be. Then you have the final one who cuts the thread of life. That's like Hercules. Yes, yeah, exactly. It, it, exactly. Yeah. It's the same. Yes. In the, in Hades. Yeah, Hades. Yes, sir. It's the exact same. And so we have to understand that TK's thread is different than my thread. MB's thread is different than my thread. Crew's thread is different. Everybody's thread is different. And if, if I start getting trapped in wanting everybody else's thread, I lost my own thread. And it might get cut shorter because 
I'm focused on everybody else's. So I, I only get so long of a thread. I can only afford to focus on mine in order to be the best version of ourselves. So, um, oh, here's your uh, ladies. It's clothal, lacassis, and atropos. But the challenging yet necessary thing to do is to work to be grateful with what we already have and what is distributed into our life. Because in order to upgrade our software that TK was talk talking about late, uh, earlier, the system that we're getting, we can either continue to keep that, it'd be like never updating your iPhone. But you, you, you just keep the old software from the LimeWire days when it's the fire, fire city, you know, it's breaking down the computer. When you're in the song. <laughs> exactly. Or you can continue to upgrade every single year, every single day, every single way, and continue to make sure my blessings are my blessings and I'm grateful for mine. A trophos looks like atrophy, kind of, you know, like you like lose something and then it cuts. Yeah, that's right. It's Truly. kind of like it hurt you, like the more God you started realizing who you were, the more God you became, and the harder it was to cut his bread. Yes. And like that's really what you need to do is become more righteous and do the right thing and become more godly. Instead of we're not trying to be above God, we're trying to be of God. Right? Yes. So like that just shows like the more he found himself, because he had all these distractions, like the woman, all these different, like the ego, and it made his thread like really weak, so it was easy for it to cut and take the soul. And then when he like discovered that he's more than that, he became like more glowing, his, his thread was glowing, he couldn't cut it. You're exactly right. And where does he have to go to? He has to go to say his lady, which is she gets less corrupted over time, right? She becomes, becomes a better woman, but he has to go down into hell and literally dive into this pit to save her. And that's the cool too, like about like get, becoming more like amplified with like with your energy, you with that you become a light for people that come to God. Truly. So that's why like, he started realizing he was and he starts amplifying his light. And like that when you go around people that are like in a dark place, just like the way you talk to them with your energy can start bringing light yeah. to them. And you become the crew for the people getting distracted by the sirens. Marcus Aurelius, one of the greatest ever to ever even think and ever. He's the man. Except whatever comes to you woven in the pattern of your destiny for what could be more aptly fit for your needs. Because again, he's gonna go through different challenges. I don't, I'm not going, we're not going through Jesus's exact walk. We're going through the outline of the same challenges he had. And again, we might have to die for our own truths. And that's a beautiful, beautiful picture. But I'm not trying to walk TK's challenges. His vices are my vices. Demby's vices are my vices. I conquer Demby's vices better than, better than he can do it because it's his vice. Demby conquers my vices better than I can do it because it, it's not his vice. So we all have our own walk, our own path to walk, but we gotta be grateful for what comes to us. Because it, it's, it's been, it's been, it, you know, this, this is no, this is no new thing, but whether, oh, go ahead, TK. Yeah, so this ties back into what we started with. So going back to the operating system, right? So whether or not a new collective religious symbol will emerge remains to be seen. So we don't know if something like Christianity will ever come again, um, where people can fully buy into it in the whole world essentially bought into that idea. So we don't know whether or not that will come. But for the present, Masks. those who are aware, <laughs> Those who are aware of the problem are obliged to make their own individual search for meaning. And this is the whole idea of individuation. It becomes the way of life. And so we're going down these things and rather than buying into one total collective religion, it's like, I wanna be able to discover all these things. We've dived into some Greek mythology since today. We've dived into some Christian mythology today. And so now we're, we're looking at all these other different operating systems, but we're using them all to start to look at the inside world a lot more. And so the idea is you want to be able to look at these myths and become more of who you are each time. We're trying to become more of an individual and that's what individuation is all about. And so we've gone through the psychic cycle over the past couple of weeks where it's like you become alienated, you feel lost in the world. And so you eventually want to find your way back and the way to find your way back, back is through connecting to these things and realizing what actually dwells within your greater psyche. And the more that you can start to see how it operates because all these things are already happening inside you. It's just you're bringing awareness to them now. You're bringing light to it. And so now you can actually see what's the next, next path of that cycle that we've been talking about. And individuation is what keeps you going through that cycle. Rather than getting lost in alienation, now you can continue to reassemble yourself and continue to build yourself and find out more and more who you are. 
and that becomes what your life's about. And it's the same thing Christianity used to do for people because they would say, what would Jesus do? And they continue to go down that path and become more conscious of their internal world and the external world. And so that's what we're aiming to do here is cover this idea of individuation and continuing to add all these things. And this looks like it's a perfect yeah. transition. And this is just innovation. Individuation is the new way of life, becoming the best you. What was Jesus? He was just the best him. They're like, Jesus, why do you do this? Why do you do that? He's like, I do what I see the Father do. Where is, where is he fucking seeing the Father? He's seeing the Father internally. Like, hey, how come, how come uh, you're working on the Sabbath? He's like, well, is the Sabbath for God or is, there's, 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 there's the Sabbath for man? He's always asking those questions. And it's like he's always true to himself every single time. All the way up until he passed, he was true to himself. And he was tapped into the big G. He was tapped into God. And so my, my guy is Jesus, I'll be honest, but there's so many necessary additives. You got your Greek mythology, you got your Nordic mythology, you have your Egyptian, you have your Her Hermetic laws, you have Taoism, you have uh, Eastern philosophy. Everything is talking about the same principles. You have science, you have religion, you have etc. Continuously talking about the same thing. Um, and we have to fill the missing pieces because modern day society, is so much information, it's nuts. So bring the sermon to the table, melt down the impurities, and just leave yourself with the gold. And you can continue to flow through the life with the river working for you, instead of trying to swim upstream the whole time, and the, the, <laughs> exactly, and not making any progress and wondering what the hell is going on. And that's what, stay true to yourself. And that's all we have for today, you guys. Yeah. That's it.